Hello, Jay. How are you? Good, thank you. Now, you were in Sydney during the swinging 60s. What was Sydney like back then? Was it like London or New York? No, it was a backwater. Was really? Marvelous. Why? But the only place where it wasn't a backwater was where I used to go and all the nice people. It was like all the best people had, had come up to the surface. That's an arrogant thing to say, isn't it? But if it's all true... All the best people had come up to the surface and they all congregated in the one or two or four or five places. Where was that? Where, where did you hang out? Uh, the Royal George. It's a hotel down in the lower parts of Sydney near the docks and um, Reppin's Cafes. They were little cafes run by a group of brothers called the Reppin's Brothers and there was about seven throughout the city but there were two within the city so we could meet always you could find somebody there and then someone lovely to talk to and then there was Lauren Zini's a wine bar the first one that I was aware of that was quite sophisticated and that was in Elizabeth Street and then there was Rose Street where the Galleria Cafe was and all lots of little shops and beautiful places to eat and it was uh, flanked on one side by the Hotel Australia. All of these places, almost all of them, were destroyed by Harry Seidler, who put up high rises and tore down all these beautiful places. So there's no, not even, it's not even possible to go there and feel nostalgic because they don't exist anymore, except for the Royal George, but it's been tarted up. Do you miss them a lot? Well, I well, it's all right for Harry Seidler. He could go back to his ancient city and go to all his old haunts but he came here and destroyed all ours. One very popular area was King's Cross at the time. We had one hotel we went there just to be with our gay friends and that was called the Rex. He didn't get his hands on that I believe. Who owned, who owned the Rex Hotel? Well I never even bothered to find out but they were very open and it was a very much a gay, a gay gathering place. Was we it had gay a lot friendly? Of gay, fri gay friendly. It, it, would, it was heterosexually un unfriendly, I think. <laughs> so, did you meet any celebrities at the time? Oh, cross dressing ones only in the, in the, that particular area. Anyone we would no, have heard I'm, of? But I've met many celebrities in here who weren't celebrities. You met the great Sammy Lee, didn't you? Yes, I, I was. It was rumored that I was even his mistress, but that was because of my father's paranoia. Were you his he'd mistress? Say, he'd say, "I know where you've been. You've been with Sammy Lee. I know. I know you dark bitch." And I thought it's a pity I've never even set eyes on Sammy Lee, and I never did. Did you ever see Lay Girls? Yes, we often went there, but there was a better place. There was a place called the Purple Carrot. The Purple Carrot. Yes, and there was one man there. And he so incredibly funny. So tell me about the people I mean, you it met. Was a, it was like rib achingly funny. He was Who was just David? So amazing. He was just he was not only extrovert and glorious and funny, but he was he put on the most extraordinary costumes and it was his whole thing. It was just his his world that we went into. And that was my favourite place. And I think that was in the 64, 65. And what did he own exactly? What he did, he, he didn't own that place, he just... He went there. But they, they wanted him to be there because they attracted customers that way. Did they have shows? Um, Williams, David Williams. David Williams was his <laughs> name. <back>. It's all <laughs> it's coming like an back. aeroplane that comes It in, is. Comes in. <laughs> did they put shows on? Cabaret? They put cabarets on, yes. What kind of cabaret? Well, I can't remember. All I did I all I all did was just adore being there and loving being with the people. We'd sometimes go from the wrecks and, and get in the back door there and, and sit there and just enjoy it until two in the morning. And this was before the Sydney Opera House, wasn't it? Yes, it was. What was it's Sydney like before the Sydney Opera House? It's such an icon. Well, it had a very beautiful tram depot down there. We love the trams. One would almost balance against the other because we we lost all our trams and we got the opera house. <laughs> would Sometimes you? we no no the opera house is something that 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 must be and it's it's glorious but it was sad losing the trams and it's of course it wasn't because of the opera house it was because um, it was because some government government agent got some contract for buses and he decommissioned the trams. And they were they tore up. Actually, they didn't. 
they didn't tear up the tram lines. They're there still, so we can get them back. And then all, and then all of that area closed down, so that became free. And then it was given by the government to the people, I think, and that's how. I don't know the true story. You'll have to interview Peter. How has Sydney changed the most? It's crueler. In what way? People were much more, um, you know, take my society. I could go into the city and there would be about, there'd be about 400 people circulating around that, and then there'd be, say, I could, without it, planning anything, I could leave my place of work and end up having a lovely evening without planning it. You know, you just bump into this person or this person and then we'd all go off somewhere and then there'd be a little circle. A new person would be introduced to the circle and it was such an all-absorbing social thing. That, um, it was my university. I never had time to go to university. So it was the University of Life. And I never had life. a bad thing happen. I used to hitchhike home right back to the northern beaches and I used to just stand up in uh, just near the bridge and hitchhike quite late at night and nothing, nothing bad ever happened. Has Sydney changed for the better in any ways? No, you see, you're talking to a nostalgic person, so I'm so... Um, I'm so attached to my nostalgia that I can't give any credit to Sydney. And I loved the way in Sydney in those days you didn't know all the undercurrents that, that, that were occurring because the, the, the press would, um, would protect our captains of industries and, and, or our, you know, the people. You know, they all seem sort of sacrosanct. And I know it's old fashioned and not very true to life, but I prefer not knowing all the mucky things that you know now, right the next minute after it happens. I, I prefer the mystery and, you know, the sort of dark. The dark thing was there, but you didn't have to know the details. Ignorance was bliss. Yeah. So you feel it's been, it's been corrupted. I know that's very, um, I know that's a very shallow thing to say, but I preferred the old Sydney. How have attitudes changed? I even preferred the old buildings. The old buildings, because you get the high the rises. Old society. What else do you have? I preferred. I preferred the way nuns wore habits. I preferred almost everything I can think of. I preferred. What about attitudes? Have they changed a lot? Yeah, I preferred the old attitudes. What was that? I like the uptight thing. I liked how a sex was in the cupboard. That's an outrageous <laughs> thing to say, but I like cupboard and sex. <laughs> you liked it all covered up, all I behind lace all, curtains. I like pretend it didn't exist, and then you had the magic and the mystery. I hate those magazines they put out now with all the, you know, educating teens of how to win a boyfriend. I think they're dangerous. In what way? Well, take for instance this thing called the raunch culture. Apparently, according to those magazines, they I don't read them myself, but according, they talk about how to sexually entertain your boyfriend. Now, Little kids of 12, 13, 14 are reading those. And then the world becomes so competitive because they some of them are learning these tricks and then they've got to compete and then they've got to become raunchy in order to get a boyfriend. And I worry about that because because I've got a 10-year-old granddaughter and I'm worried about her so do courting think, days that are in the future. So do you I think, don't think they're in the future. I think they've already begun. <laughs> <laughs> they, they learn younger now. So do you think the characters of people have changed? Does Sydney still have those characters it had in the 60s and 70s? There are no eccentrics in Sydney. You can comb the streets. I don't. There were, we had the most exquisite, iconic eccentrics roaming the city, and you'd always catch sight of them one or another when you went into the city. And I don't see any anymore. Everyone. I, I came home from work the other day with a feather in my hat, and people started shunning me. They didn't look at me in an affectionate way at all. That sort of thing. Maybe it's in my imagination. Is there anything you'd like to add or talk about? No, I like the uh, I like the, the uh, question and Germaine answer. Greer. What about Jermaine Greer? Oh, well, Jermaine Greer. Yes, well, I met her, of course, among all the You met people. Jermaine Greer? Well, I knew her. She hated me because I was romantic. And I had those ideas that I've just spoken of. She thought I was loathsome. Any other notoriety? I remember one day our friend... Michael Thomas coming up the stairs of my little flat in Kirribilli, he said, Jan, Jan, you're famous, Jermaine Greer hates you. 
<laughs> that is brilliant. Are you still in contact with Jermaine Greer? I, I was in contact with her um, about five years ago because my, my friend was in prison and I knew she was fond of him and I thought she could write an affirmative letter about him. So that's the last contact that I had. Would you like to be back in contact? No, not especially. Any message for Jermaine she's if she's too, watching? She's too challenging for me as a person. You've got some wonderful photos in this book, of your friend's book, of the 60s. Yes. Would you like to share some of the photos from that era? Oh, yes. I Look, think these ones are rather older than the 60s here. No, they're not. I'll start with her. That was Edward's mother. We're grateful to... And who was Edward? Edward was our... Well, so many of our best... He was our best friend, and he, he was a friend of Jermaine, too. I and this, who is this gentleman here? That's Edward's father. Oh, His wonderful. name was Edward, that's Edward the First. Edward. If he lived in America, he'd be Edward the Second. And when did Edward pass away? Our Edward. He, in 1986. 1986. And you've got some photos of Edward. Do you know, for 13 or 14 years after he passed away, we met on his either his death day or, or his birthday and had a huge gathering. And, and they're all registered here, the gatherings we had. Can you show us some photos from the era, from around the 60s, if you've got any? All right, I've got lots I would love here. to see some of those, bringing yes. back memories. This is, uh, this is the beginning of the 60s. Oh, that's amazing. These are Bohemians. Which one is Edward? Is Edward, this Edward? look how handsome. Very handsome. Yeah. I love this photo. Yes. See, Edward lived in Bayview, and although we were associated with the push, mm. we, were, we weren't very academic. We were called the baby push. Because we were a bit younger than them. What's the, the ones push? That, what is the push? The push was a group of libertarians and people from university that used to congregate and talk about a lot about anarchy and, and undermining the government. And, and I'd better give you a, a more intelligent definition later. Can you put that in brackets? I'll do that. Don't okay. you worry. Right. And let's see some more photos. I love these All photos. Right. Yes. There's Richard Warrett. He became famous. What did he do? He was a, um, the director of the Sydney Theatre Company at the end of his life, but he directed lots of plays. There he is in in in, his, in drag. In drag. <laughs> and there. Quite a character. There he is. This is Richard Warrett's page. Richard <laughs> Warrett. Yes, and now he's Michael Stutchbury, Dickie Wake, Stephen Little. And you knew all Lyle these people. Dunlop. Gosh. There are not many. There's Tina. She. Tell, tell about Tina. Tina. She, ran, she was the editor of Film News Tina. for many years. She's a great film expert. There's me. Where's you? Let's see you. There's Edward and my beloved Edward. Edward and you. And that was Edward's rough boyfriend. And look, that's my portrait of Edward. He had beautiful blue eyes. God, and very a fur handsome. shirt. People Gosh. used to say... Edward, aren't you going to take off your fur shirt <laughs> when we went to the beach? <laughs> <laughs> this is my page, apparently. So these are photos of you? Yes, that's me. That's you? Yeah. No, that's not me. That's, that's not Irene. You. That's, that's Irene. These that's are me. you. There's me. And this is in the Stephen 60s. Stephen took that. And here's Robert. That's my portrait of Robert. You can tell my portrait. Who is Robert? He was just one of our, our um, friends. That's you as we well. We lost contact with Robert. And were you regarded as Bohemians, Jan? No, I like to think that I was a beatnik because I believe... A beatnik? Look, here a we beatnik. are. One of us is getting married. So you got married. You were very conventional, it looks as though you? It looks as though I'm marrying Howard. That was one of my did first boyfriends. Have, did people have to get married in those days? Well, I think they like the idea. It's These amazing. people are amazing. They, um... They needed some money to go away and have a better time, so this dignified man, um, I was sitting home watching television, they said that Kerry John Rolfe of Bayview had held up a bank in Mossman and asked for high denominations, and and, uh, and of course he was thrown into prison. This was his, Which one was this he? This was in the getaway car. I can't talk so, about that. So, Jan, show me a few more photos from that era, and tell yeah, me about how it's changed... This is the 60s still, isn't it? These are these wonderful things that Stephen Little did there as we got older. They, they are, they're uh, caricatures. Uh, let's see yours. Which one are you? I think I might have lost mine. Oh dear, how convenient. That's not you. So, you're quite happy that Sydney's no longer so repressed. 
No, I told you that I wasn't happy. You see, mm. this will be very controversial because I liked the way it was. You miss those days. I'm a complete. What is that? Uh, backward stepping bus. Retrogressive, retrograde. Retrograde, yeah, completely retrograde. That's today. I might change tomorrow. I'm rather flippant. Sorry. Gosh. I wouldn't like my friends to see this. I've got some very politically oriented feminist friends that hate my way. What are your views of feminism? What? Oh, no, I can't. Go on. Tell Uncle William. What do you some think of feminism? Some of my best friends are feminists. <laughs> so are mine, funnily enough. Yeah, they are. And you knew Jermaine Greer. You, you were best friends with her. I wasn't best friends. You were certainly not. <laughs> I do like these photos. But Jan, I think that's where we're we'll wrapping up. This one's in London. That's, that's Louise in London, swimming Ferrier. in London. What's her name again? Louise Ferrier. She was part of the Oz thing, the Oz. Oz magazine. Yes, Oz magazine. That was Richard's girlfriend. Oh, Richard. Richard. Richard Neville. I don't Neville, think, who's the editor? Yes, I don't think there's a picture of Richard here, but we did know him. Amazing. Oh, how are you?